Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my Accounts Payable series. If you haven't watched part one yet, what are you doing here? Go watch part one and then come on back. All right, so in part one, we updated our customer form so that customers can also be marked as payees or not. And we set up a payee category list so we could say what category that payee belongs to. Okay, that's great. Now, we're gonna be building more forms and reports and such where I need to see what the payee name is. Who is the payee? Now, some of your payees might be people. In fact, let's say, uh, let's pick somebody here. Let's do, um, all right, John luc is a payee and he is, uh, let's say we, he's our landlord, we pay him rent, okay? But he doesn't have a company name. I was going to put Borg Inc. there or something. But no, let's, we need a couple people in here that are payees that don't have uh, names. And we'll do Will, Will Riker, too. Will Riker is uh, communications. Okay? So we've got a couple people in here who have company names and a couple people in here who are not. So I'm going to make a query called my payee queue. It's going to have a list of their IDs and the name. Okay? The name that's going to display, for example, on a report or in a combo box. All right, so let's go to create, query design. I'm gonna close this stuff. And I'm gonna bring in my customer table. We need the customer ID. Now I'm gonna bring in first name, last name, and company name separately, because you might want those things separately. And later on, we might add more fields and like the address and stuff when it comes to like, you know, send out whatever reports we have to send out. But for now, this is fine. We can always add to it later. And right here is where I'm going to put my calculation that determines whether to display the company name or the first and last name. And here's what I'm going to say. If the company name is null or is blank, right, then I want to display first name, last name. Otherwise, display the company name, right? Now, I got a whole separate video that goes over this in a lot more detail and shows you how you can do reports that have both on there or just one and you get rid of the empty spaces where you don't need it. So if you want more details on this, go watch this video. But we're going to use a simple immediate if function, if, right? And we're going to come into this field here. I'm going to go shift F2, zoom in so I can see it in more detail. We're going to call this the payee name colon. And I'm going to say if is null, this is a function, if is null, the company name, comma, what do I want to put in here if that's null? Well, I want it to be first name and a space, so that's quote, space, quote, and the last name. Otherwise, put company name in here. Okay, so if the company name is null, I want to see first name and last name, Otherwise, if it's not null, show me the company name. All right, got separate videos for if, the is null function, and this is called string concatenation. I got separate videos on all of these things. If you don't know how this stuff works, I'll put links to all this down below in the description in the links section. All right, I'm gonna hit okay. That'll put that back there. And let's run this bad guy and see what it looks like. And perfect. There we go. So there's the payee name. Now, I'm seeing everybody in here. So the payee query should probably say, okay, this person has to be a payee, right? All right, let's go to design view and let's find payee, is payee right there. I'm gonna bring this closer to the front and we're gonna say the criteria for this is true. And now if I run it, there we go. And let's add a sort too, let's sort it by the payee name. So we'll come over here and find sort and drop that down. And I like to bring the sorted fields up to the front too. So we'll do that and let's run it and it looks perfect. There we go. There's our list of payees that we can now use in our queries and in our forms and in our reports. And there's the payee name. All right, let's save this as the payee queue. All right, let's go ahead and shut this down. Now we have enough information to create our table of bills. Every time we get a bill, we get a bill in the mail or it's emailed to you or do they still send bills in the mail? I think I still once in a while get, every time I get a bill in the mail, I'm like, what, what are you doing? Right? Don't you have a paperless option? But anyways, you get them emailed or whatever. Um, and so we need a place to store all that information, right? Who you owe money to and when. So let's create a table, table design. 
And this will be our bill table. So we've got a bill ID. And this is the auto number. And now who do we owe this money to is the payee ID. Now you could call it the customer ID or if you want to, that's up to you. It's okay to use different names that represent the same thing. For example, sometimes you might do a self-join relationship where you've got a, a person and then their parents. So you, you have the mother and the father, right? Now the table might be called person T and the person is a person ID. But in that person's record, you might have a mother ID and a father ID, but those both reference back to persons and the person table. So it's a self-joining table, right? Self-joining relationship. I got a whole separate video on how that works. I'll put a link down below if you're curious, you want to learn more, but you can have the same, basically the same thing, right? The same item related to a, another table, but it's really the same thing. So a payee ID is a customer. You just got to know because access won't always see that and, and think it's the same thing. It might not make relationships and joins for you automatically. You'll have to manually join those. And we'll see how that happens soon. All right, but this payee ID is a number of type long integer. And sometimes maybe over here in the notes, you could put this is a customer ID if you want. Um, that's fine. Okay, amount due. That's a currency value. Now we got a bunch of dates. All right, we got the bill date. Right, that's the date the bill was issued. You can put the issued date or the invoice date, or whatever you want to put. I like to track the entered date, right? The date time that you actually put it in the system. This is really good if you got a multi-user setup because you really want to know, hey, when did Jane in accounting actually put this in here? Because this wasn't in here yesterday and it's due today. <laughs> so I'm going to come down here for the default value and make that equals date, open, close parentheses. It'll put today's date in there. And if you want it to the minute, put equals now in there for the date and time. All right, next up, we got the due date. When is this thing really due? Uh, you could put a, a default value in here if you want to, like 30 days after the bill date. That's completely up to you. I don't usually bother because I like to manually type those in unless it's something that I know on a regular basis. Um, now, we're also gonna put a paid date in here and that's how we're gonna determine when a bill is paid. If that value is null, that means the bill is unpaid. If there's a date in there, that means we paid it. Now I do this slightly differently in my full payables seminar because we actually have a bill table and a payment table. So you could make multiple payments on a single bill. Let's say a contractor sends you an invoice for $5,000 and you send them a check right now for 1500 and then a check a week from now for a thousand. And then the balance later, you can have three payments that are tracked to a single bill. A little more complicated. I cover that in the full payable seminar. But for today, we're just going to keep it simple. Okay. All right. Any notes you want to put in here? Long text. And then we're going to go ahead and save this as our bill T. All right. Primary key. Yes. There we go. I always like to throw a couple sample records in here. So let's go to the data sheet view. Now we need to see what our payees are. So I'm going to open up the payee queue. So we get our list of payees. All right, so the first one, payee, is going to be payee one to Computer Learning Zone for $100. And the bill date was, let's say, June 1st. See how nice the ISO dates are? You know exactly what that is, right? The entered date is right there. Let's say it's due on 7 1 and it's not paid yet. Okay, next one, let's see, we got uh, the rent from payee ID four, and that's, I don't know, $2,000. The bill date was 6-2, and it was entered today, and it's due on 7-2. Okay, see how this works? I usually only put a couple of records in in the table directly. The rest of it I'm going to put into the form. I just like to have at least a couple of records here so that I can see it when we build the form. Okay, the form is next. I'm going to build this as a continuous form, just like the customer list here. That's a continuous form. I have a blank continuous form down here in my template. I'm just going to copy and paste that control C control V into the bill F. All right, open that up. There we go. That's all it's in there. Design view, make it a little bit bigger. First thing I do is bind this form to a table or a query. So we're going to open up the forms properties, go to data, find record sources, and you can bind it right to the bill table. Okay. Save that. We can close that for now. Now I'm going to go to form design, add existing fields, 
And I'm just going to grab everything and drop it over here in the detail section for now. So I'm going to click on the first one, shift, click on the last one, let the shift key go, and then click and drag this whole mess and drop it right there. Okay. All right. Now, delete all of these labels. Just draw a box that touches them all, hit delete. Boom, gone. You'll see why in a minute. Now, the bill ID, do you really need that on the form? Ah, that's kind of up to you. I usually don't, but I leave them for teaching purposes so people get to understand how these things work. So, yeah, we'll keep that one for now. We could delete it later. Now, I got this gray guy here just so I could steal its format. So, I'm going to click on that and hit the format painter. If you don't have it on your toolbar, it's under format over here. Format and then the format painter is right there. But I put it up on my quick launch toolbar because I use it all the time. All right. Now that I got the bill ID, we can get rid of you. This could probably be a little bit smaller and I'm going to left align it, which I think it already was. Yep. Okay. Slide that up into place. Next is going to be the payee ID, but I don't want the ID there. I want a combo box, right? I want a combo box with my list of payees in it. Fortunately, we have a list of payees right there. So let's just grab that. Okay. So form design, find the combo box, drop it right here. Wizard starts up. Get the values from a table or query. Yup. Next, where does your list of values come from? Queries, pay EQ. That's why we made it. Next, what fields do you want in the combo box? Really, all I need is the customer ID and the payee name. Everything else at this point is meaningless. Okay. Next, sort it by payee name. I know we have a sort in the query, but the combo box will override that. Okay. Next, this is what it looks like. Now you don't see the little checkbox there that says hide the key field because this is based on a query, not a table. So we have to just manually hide that customer ID. So grab this little bar here, drag it all the way to zero. And if you're not sure if you're at zero, drag it past it. <laughs> so you make sure that the width of that column is zero. Make this as big as it needs to be. All right, next. Now, which field is the important one? What's the field that we need the data from? I need the customer ID next, and I'm going to store that in the payee ID of the bill table. See how that works? We're picking a customer ID and we're storing it in payee ID. Okay. Next, what label would you like? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it in a minute and then hit finish. Okay. Delete that label. We can get rid of this guy. And now I'm going to slide that combo box right there and make it as big as you think it needs to be. That's probably good right there. Okay, let's save it. Let's take a peek at what we got. I'm going to go to form view. Again, I have all these buttons up on my quick launch toolbar. You can right click and go to form view if you want. And there we go. There's my combo box with my payees in it. See that? Okay, now let's just basically now it's just moving these guys into place. Okay, we can get rid of payee ID. We don't need it. Goodbye. We got the amount due. We've got, and let's see how, how wide these are. Let's take a peek. Uh, that's good, that's good. We can make these a little bit shorter. I really don't like layout view. There's this thing here called layout view that you can now like resize up. I, I, I'm very iffy with layout view. I've had it cause problems. Usually it only causes problems when you've got VBA in here and it messes some things up. So I honestly stay away from it. That's just me, it's a personal thing. I know a lot of people love it but I'll go back to design view and resize it and make a guess. And then I'll take a peek at it again in form view. That looks good. Okay. <laughs> That's just me. I know so many people tell me there's nothing wrong with layout view. I use it all the time. Yeah. Okay. I've had problems with it, but okay. Now we're just lining all these up like so I can close this guy, right? Um, I like to have all my stuff left aligned. That's again, another one of my preferences. If you want them right aligned, that's fine. Now this notes, we don't need to see the notes for every single record. So I'm going to actually take the notes and move them down into the form footer like that. That way it just shows up once on the bottom of the form and everybody else, right? Well, you'll just see the notes for the record that you're on. Okay. Shrink up the detail section by grabbing it right there. I like to apply a specific format to my notes fields and watch this. I already have one and it's already called notes. So I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to go back to my customer form. See this notes? I got it. It's yellow with the shadow. I love that. That's just how I like to do my notes. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to copy it to my clipboard. 
come over here, click in the form footer, and hit paste. And there's notes. And it's named the same thing, so it's going to work. As long as the fields are named the same thing, you can do that. And if not, you just change the name. All right, so there's the notes for that bill, if you want to put notes in there. Okay, save it, close it, close that. Let's open up our bill form and see. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. And if I put some notes in here, right, these are notes. This is for the record that you're on. So Jean-Luc doesn't have notes. See, that one's for computer learning zone. Okay, now we just got to do our labels across the top. Design view. Now, I like to be lazy sometimes, especially when I know that I'm not going to be doing too much changing. So I'm going to get rid of the second label. I just stick everything in one label. Watch this. Stretch this label all the way across. And right here, you got your ID, and then just use space, 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 right? There's the payee. Hold down the space bar, All right? Amount, and we got due, entered. Oh, no, that was the bill date. This is the due date, and this is the paid date. And so this one over here, you just go back, change in here, All right? Issued, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Okay, okay, looks good. Save it, close it, open it, beautiful. Cook them with gas. All right, so that's gonna do it for part two, folks. Tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel for more. We got lots more to cover. If you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm still recording, so I'm gonna get them posted as soon as I can. And once again, if you're interested in a complete payables database with lots more features, including recurring billing and all kinds of stuff, then check out my payable seminar. But that's going to do it for part two. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part three. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos. Plus, you get access to my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.